A lot of you probably recognize these. These are uh, camera stabilizers I've made over the last few months. And this one here was the first one I made. It sucked because it was just super flimsy and the camera wobbled all over the place. So I came back and I made this one, which is much more rigid. It worked a lot better. Although there were some things I still didn't like about it, so I'm back for a uh, third attempt. And I'm just gonna jump into it here and start building it and I'll show you my ideas along the way, just uh, in the interest of saving some time. Using this pipe cutter, I've uh, chopped out all my pieces of copper tubing and I'm using the exact same 3 quarter inch copper tubing I used for my previous camera stabilizer. So what I've got here are 4 2 inch pieces, 3 3 inch pieces, 5 4 inch pieces, 3 5 inch pieces, and 2 10 inch pieces. I'm just going to take a quick break and show you how to use one of these if you've never used one before. Mark out where you want to cut the tube off at and then clamp your pipe cutter down on top of the mark like that. And then you want to rotate it around just like that and then every couple revolutions just tighten up the handle and eventually this blade will cut through the tube. And then if you want to, you can use a little deburring tool to remove the burrs from the inside of your tube. As far as hardware goes, I'm using five elbow joints, six T joints, eight end caps, and then a whole assortment of washers, coarse thread, quarter inch uh, screws, and like nuts and wing nuts and stuff. To solder up all the parts, uh, start off by taking some medium grit sandpaper. I think I was using around 320 grit and just give all the contact surfaces a light sanding just to expose some fresh copper and then use a paintbrush to coat these surfaces in a bit of soldering flux. Next you can assemble the parts and then flip your torch on and heat the joint up until it gets nice and hot. Then you can go ahead and touch some solder to the joint and if all went well the solder should just get sucked right in there. Once you're done you should have a pretty nice looking solder joint. Before I go ahead and drill out the holes I'm going to punch a few divots into the copper. Then we're going to go ahead and drill out the holes. And there's one hole completely drilled out. Sorry if that was a little quick, I've just got a lot to cover in this video. I want to make sure I get through it all in a reasonable amount of time. So I finished uh, soldering everything up and drilling everything out and I thought I'd just take a minute to uh, show you what I've got so far. Uh, this piece here that you're looking at is comprised of a uh, four inch piece of copper tubing over here and a two inch piece down here and they're both connected to elbow joints and they join up at the middle to a t-joint and this branches off with my 10 inch piece that connects up to a second t-joint and it carries on uh, with the five inch piece connected up to a third t-joint and then this guy branches off with a three inch piece over here and a two inch piece over here and those are both capped off on the end everything here is soldered together and then over here I've got the exact same thing, but it's basically a mirror image of what I just showed you. So it's just essentially flipped like that. You may have noticed these three open connections, one on the T-joint, and then there's these two elbows here and here. And of course there's a matching three on the other half over there. And these will be used to connect the two halves together. And I'll be connecting them together with these uh, three four inch pieces I cut out earlier. And I just drilled out holes in on the ends here when they were in place, like I stuck them in the actual connection like that so that I didn't have to worry about anything fitting properly after I drilled everything out. I thought I'd go ahead and assemble it all together to show you what it looks like and even put all the bolts in place and uh, I've decided to combine the fastening bolts uh, sort of together with the, uh, the weight holding bolts just to kind of kill two birds with one stone here. Just uh, makes the design a little bit simpler and don't have to haul around as much uh, I guess hardware. There's not as much setup time involved either. And then up here I've got of course the handle mount and it also is bolted in place there and this is the handle it's basically made of a five inch piece and a three inch piece held together with an elbow and capped off at the end and that'll just get secured on there with the universal joint and a few bearings and then up top here I've got uh, four holes drilled out here and those will be basically would hold the wooden camera mounting platform in place to make that wooden mounting platform I'm using some of this half inch plywood and I've just marked out a six by six box and uh, made a line down the middle and then every inch I just made a mark. I'm going to drill out some camera mounting positions there and then these four guys here will be used to hold it onto our copper tube assembly and I just placed this on top really carefully and just marked out the four holes like that. So again I don't have to worry about uh, fitting properly onto my rig. I started off by chopping up my square with a miter saw and then to drill out all of those camera mounting holes I used my uh, 930 seconds size drill bit. Then for those four connection, like the hold down holes on the corners, I started on the side that had the little markings on it, and I drilled through with a small drill bit. I think I was using around a 1 8 inch size drill bit, 
and then I flipped the entire piece of wood over and drilled about halfway through with a 5 8 inch spade drill bit. And then I followed that right up with my 9 30 seconds size drill bit. And this will allow me to sink carriage bolts down into those holes so that they don't stick out above the surface of the wood at all. And that way we don't have to worry about any sort of interference going on between the camera body and the bolts. To finish off the handle, I chopped out three grooves in the end of the handle that wasn't capped off. This will give me a little more flexibility when I'm trying to secure that end onto something. And I used some sandpaper to remove the burrs from the edges. For my universal axis, I used two RC car joints that were clipped together in the center. And I threw some bearings on one end, uh, secured them in place, and then I used some electrical tape to bulk up the diameter to about a half an inch. I secured the other end into the mounting hole in the frame. And using a little hose clamp, I secured the handle to the taped up bearings. And that's about it. So I'm finally done, and it shaped up pretty nicely. I even went ahead and threw the weights on the bottom and balanced it out with my camera on top. But I might talk about that a little bit later. Uh, right now I want to focus more on the test. And as for testing this thing, I don't want to do my usual backyard test because it's kind of a stupid test if you ask me. It doesn't really demonstrate a whole lot. So I'm going to collapse it down, throw it in a backpack, and go for a bike ride and make a cool video. I went ahead and threw my camera on this thing and got it fairly well balanced. Then I took my phone and took some pictures of the weights so that when I get to wherever I'm going I don't have to you know, start from scratch again. And what I'm going to do now is see how long it takes me to completely disassemble this and see if it fits in a backpack. That took 2 minutes and 25 seconds, which is pretty good in my books. It's definitely acceptable for something like this. And I broke it down to all the little components you've seen here, and I even left all the weight packs sort of all screwed together with the wing nuts on there so that it'll be easier to assemble it when I need to put it back together. Here's everything in the backpack. I've got camera gear here. I've got my regular shoes here because I'm using my cleated biking shoes to bike wherever I'm going. I haven't decided yet. I've got my camera stabilizer down here. It's kind of tucked under everything. I've got a water bottle somewhere in here and a tripod, a little tripod. So, you know, it's you know, everything fits fairly nicely in a backpack of this size. The camera stabilizer really just sits underneath everything. It doesn't take up any crazy amounts of space. I decided to bike up Mount Douglas. It's uh, the tallest mountain in Victoria, BC. It's about a quarter kilometer elevation at the summit. So I'm gonna go ahead and reassemble this stabilization rig and we'll see how it works. There we go. It took about seven and a half minutes, but I've got it all assembled and fairly well balanced. And I may tweak it a little bit as I go here, but I'm fairly pleased with that overall. You know, seven minutes for a rig like this isn't really all that bad when you consider everything.